The Amaru was a system characterized by the existence of various councils from the Council of Children to the Supreme Council of Juri Nacheke. This was meant to ensure the highest moral standards in the community. The Juri Nacheke acted as parliament and had the following functions, it presided over religious ceremonies. It solved disputes in the community. It also mediated in disputes involving the Meru and their neighbors it ensured the custody of the community's history, traditions and values, heritage its sanctioned wars acted as ritual leaders. They provided guidance and counseling community members. It set the moral code to be adhered to by all members of the community. If one went against the moral code, he, she would be punished. A member of the Jiri Nacheke who offended another was fined a bundle of Mira. A warrior who violated the code was fined a bull, an elder who violated the code was fined a bull or a goat, a woman who broke the code was fined a big pot of cowpeas. Marriage was regarded highly among the Ameru and a married woman would be assigned to an elderly woman, midwife, whom she must give gifts like millet, peas and black beans in exchange for midwifery. Any spouse who involved in adultery or any girl who was not a virgin at the time of marriage was stoned to death by a stoning council made up of male initiates. Marriage was exogamous, no one was allowed to marry from their clan. Before a male child was considered mature, he underwent several stages including circumcision. Before circumcision of both boys and girls, two ceremonies were performed after which they became full members of the community. The time of making spots where the ear hole perforation would be done. The time of actual perforation of the ears. The Ameru believed in the existence of a supreme being called Fafa Witu who was a loving father and took care of all. He was omnipresent. The Ameru also believed in the existence of spirits which either brought happiness or tears depending on how one lived on earth. They believed in life after death with good people going where rains come from when they die. Libations were offered to ancestors to quench their thirst and relieve their hunger building houses in the Ameru community was the work of women while men defended the community. Economic organization of the Ameru The Ameru cultivated grain crops like millet, peas, black beans, cowpeas and mira among other crops mainly for food while the excess were sold to neighbors. The Ameru kept livestock like sheep, goats and cattle for dowry payment and rituals and also for milk, meat and skin. They traded among themselves and with their neighbors. When the coastal traders penetrated the interior, they exchanged goods with them they practiced iron smelting, making implements such as knives, spears and hoes which enhanced their farming activities and trade. They practiced craft making pots and weaving baskets. Hunting and gathering was also done by Ameru to supplement their food. Political Organization of the Ameru The basic political system was based on the family headed by a father. The basic political unit was the clan. Several families made up a clan headed by a clan elder. The Ameru had a system of councils and age groups which oversaw the administration of the community. Every Meru belonged to the relevant council, e.g. the Children's Council, Council of Elders Council of Warriors. The Supreme Council was known as Juri Nacheke. The functions of the Supreme Council of Elders included settling disputes, deliberating on day-to-day -day activities, administering justice and handled disputes, inheritance disputes and acted as a final court of appeal. It also officiated over religious ceremonies. The age-set system provided the community with warriors who defended the community from external aggression. Religion's leaders like prophets influenced the political administration for the Ameru. Their system of government alternated between two organizations namely, Karuga and Entiba every 14 years and each had its own army regiment.